This is Al Brooks and this is my price action trading course. The current module is about probability and the trader's equation. Edges in trading are fleeting and small and you need an edge. You need a mathematical advantage if you're going to be profitable. This is basically a zero-sum game. You pay a little bit in commissions um, but it's essentially a zero-sum game and you're trying to take money from very smart people and all trading is subjective and hard so it's very uh, it's impossible to have a big edge the best you can hope for is a small edge and even then it probably will not last long so when you have it you have to take action high frequency trading firms HFTs use algorithms um, sometimes for days at a time maybe weeks at a time and then they decide that those algorithms are no longer as profitable as they were when they first started using them a few weeks ago and they stop using them and switch to other algorithms so even high frequency trading firms are not using algorithms forever they realize that their edges are small and don't last long and once they stop uh, being as profitable as they once were and other algorithms appear to be more profitable they switch you know, holy grails cannot last because there has to be someone taking the opposite side of the trade. There has to be an institution taking the opposite side of the trade. And if you're constantly making money, they're not going to constantly lose money. They're going to do something different. So your edge will disappear. Just think about it. If you did have a goose that was laying golden eggs, a holy grail, um, some kind of pattern that was consistently generating huge profits um, you know that you, it, it could not happen if you had one you'd have smart people on the other side of the trade uh, realizing that they're giving you money constantly and they would stop doing it there would be nobody to take the other side of uh, the trade in fact people would discover what you're doing and the algorithms would start doing what you're doing and if everybody starts to do what you're doing there's no one left to take the other side of the trade and the trade would no longer work so perfect trades holy grails cannot exist every trade is based upon the traders equation uh, which is based upon the question will I probably make money on this trade you know you ask yourself that before you take any trade and how do you know what the probability is you can use computer testing the way the high frequency trading firms do you can use years of personal experience both are valid everyone at least subconsciously only takes a trade if the chance of success times the reward is significantly greater than the chance of failure times the risk All right? so that's a mathematical formula an equation and it's the traders equation so it's the probability of success times the reward it has to be significantly greater than the probability of failure times the risk and if that is the case you have a valid setup a, sa a mathematically sound a mathematically correct situation and the trade is worth taking there are three value variables in the equation you always hear on television people talking about risk reward ratios implicit in that is the probability is greater than 50 percent so if a trader on television says wow this is a great risk reward ratio I would take this trade they're also incorporating probability into their formulation what they're saying is the probability is high enough so that they'll make money on the trade and they're particularly attracted to the trade because the reward is so much bigger than the risk but again you always have to factor in probability which is which is probably the most important variable because it's the only one you cannot control you can control your risk it's how far away you put your stop you can control your reward it's where you put your profit taking limit order the one thing you cannot control is the probability and that is probably the most difficult thing for traders starting out they they are very uncertain with probability and uh, it takes a long time to realize that everything you do in trading is uncertain you're never going to be certain of anything and if you are certain of a trade 
don't take the trade because you have to be wrong. Um, because there would be no one to take the other side of the trade. If, if a trade was 100% certain, um, everyone would see it as certain and nobody would take the opposite side. Again, you know the risk and reward because you set them when you place your bracket order. Your bracket order is two orders. Um, it's a profit-taking order and profit-taking limit order and a stop order. You know how far they are from your entry price, so you always know the risk and reward. The risk, number of ticks to your stop. The reward, the number of ticks to uh, the location of your limit order for taking profits. Probability, it's the most important variable, and it's the reason why trading is so hard to, um, um, to do well, and management is the key to success. Probability, it makes beginners not take potentially great trades because they, the probability is just not high enough, and it also causes tra uh, beginners to exit strong trades too early. They'll have a huge, uh, very strong uh, major trend reversal um, bottom, for example, and as soon as the market starts up, they'll say, oh boy, I made a point, and they take their profit, and then the move continues up for 10 or 15 more points because they refuse to accept that the probability was on their side. <clears throat> probability is the source of all, all emotion in trading because it's the one variable you cannot control. You know, risk doesn't cause emotion. Reward doesn't cause emotion because you control them. You set them. Probability is what causes emotion. Computers have no emotion, right? And you can only make money if you follow what the institutions are doing. And since the computers are trading 75% of the market, you can only make money if you follow what the computers are doing. And they are not using emotion um, to generate trade ideas. Emotion creates losers. You will lose until you can be free of your emotion, and you cannot be, you cannot win until you're comfortable with with constant uncertainty. Right? We swim in a sea of, of uncertainty as traders, and you have to be comfortable in that environment before you can make money. Again, probability can never be known with certainty. However, you can make assumptions. That, that can help uh, reduce a lot of the stress involved in trading. In general, give yourself just two choices. Either the market 60-40 or 50-50. If you cannot tell what's going on, in other words, you look at the market and say, well, I don't know, it could go up, it could go down, then it's 50-50. So use 50% 50, uh, 50 as the probability in your trader's equation. Then if you're going to take a 50-50 trade, you need a reward at least twice as big as your risk to make the trade worthwhile. So if you know your risk has to be two points, all right, and you think the probability is 50-50, I don't know if it's going to work, then you need a reward twice as big, four points. If you're taking a scalp and a strong bull trend, you're pretty sure it's going to work. So the probability is 60%. And to have a positive trader's equation, the reward has to be only as big as the risk. So if you have a two-point stop, all you have to do is go for a two-point profit to have the trade be worthwhile. If you're looking at a, at a trade and say, you know, I, I don't think this is going to work, but it's a major trend reversal, and if it does work, the reward can be very large. The minimum that you need for the reward to have a positive trader's equation is two times the risk. So if you're taking a major trend reversal and it doesn't look all that good, but it still makes sense because it's a major trend reversal, assume 40% probability, but you have to go for a reward that's at least twice your risk. So when it comes to probability, if you, you really can't tell what's going on, set the probability at 50% and then determine how much reward you need given the risk that you face. And then uh, the other choice is it's either, uh, it's either uh, 60 or 40 so it's either a 50-50 trade or it's a 60-40 trade. And if it's a 60% trade, you can exit with a reward equal to your risk. If it's a 40% trade, you can uh, exit with a reward two or three or four times your risk. Since you cannot know for certain what the probability is, uh, you have to make assumptions. And you can use your personal um, feelings to give you an idea of what assumptions you should make. 
you're either going to assume 60-40 or you're going to assume 50-50. If you look at a trade and say, yeah, I think that's a pretty good setup, I think it probably will work, then assume that your probability is 60%. It might be much higher, but it has to be at least at least 60% for you to be able to look at it and say, yeah, that, look, that looks good. For example, a low two short and a very strong bear trend, you look at it and you say, yeah, that probably will be successful. Then assume that your probability is 60%. If you look at a trade and you can't tell, I don't know if this will work, you know, I, I, don't, you know, I don't know if it won't work, I don't know if it will work, assume that your probability is 50% and then you need a reward at least twice as large as your risk. If, again, if you look at a trade that you think, oh, I don't, I don't, this doesn't look all that good, but the reward is so much bigger than the risk, I think uh, you know, uh, you know, it might have a positive trader's equation, assume the probability is 40%. And you only take the trade if the reward is several times bigger than the risk. The probability is never going to be less than 40%, and it's never going to be more than 60%. Because there has to be an institution that will take the other side of a trade. So if the probability is only 10%, there's no institution is going to take the other side of the trade with a 90% certainty of losing. So the market lives in a band between 40 and 60% probability um, most of the time, like 99% of the time. Again, you can't control probability, and you're either confident, which is certain, and that means probability of 60% or more, or you're not sure, you're uncertain, it's confusing, in which case the probability is 40 to 50, 40 to 50%. Traders, we swim in a sea of constant uncertainty. I mentioned that. And clarity exists for only brief moments, like during very strong breakouts. And most of the trading is pretty unclear, and the probability is rarely more than 60%. And you don't have to worry about that. If it, if it looks that certain, just assume that it's 60%. When traders are trading and they're starting out, they're always wondering what's to the right of the current bar. What will the next bar look like? The next 5 bars, the next 10, the next 20 bars, the next 30 bars. And you really can't tell right? You don't know. You don't know until you actually see them. And that's that uncertainty factor. The traders are always living with uncertainty. But however, you can get an idea of what will happen by simply looking to the left of the current bar. Markets have inertia, and they tend to keep doing what they have been doing. So if they've been in a trend, they'll probably continue to trend. If they've been in a, um, if they've been in a trading range, they'll probably continue in a trading range. If they're starting to break out, they'll probably continue to break out. If the breakout looks weak, it probably will fail. So you just look at what's to the left, and that is your indication of what is most likely to be to the right. Beginners are always looking for guarantees and perfect trades. You know, tell me how to trade. Give me a pattern that works all the time. Tell me how I can make money. And they don't realize that guarantees don't exist. Perfect trades don't exist. You just have to accept the reality that you, you live in a 40 to 60% probability world and you're going to be wrong 40 to 60% of the time and you're going to be right 40 to 60% of the time. Extremely good traders are going to be right more. Uh, beginners who mismanage trades are going to be right less. But most trades are going to be between 40 to 60% certain. You know, I mentioned that the market's rarely more than 60% certain. Well, in fact, you as a trader all the time believe correctly that the market is 90% certain. For example, if you buy a strong bull trend and the market goes up, 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 and hits your profit-taking limit order, but does not fill it, in other words, it needs to go one tick higher, at that instant when it hits your order and did not fill it, you still have a stop below, and your stop might be six ticks below. So at that instant, while you're waiting for your limit order to get filled by the market going one tick higher, you're holding on to a trade where you need the market to go one tick higher, yet you're willing to risk six ticks to make that bet. And you can only make that bet um, if um, you're 90% certain or better. So every day, every time you take a profitable trade, at some point during the trade, at least briefly, you're 90% confident of your uh, trade. Otherwise you would exit. 
um, because there's mathematically no other way that you could continue to hold that trade with a risk that's six times or more greater than your reward. It does not make sense to hold the trade unless you are extremely confident of making a profit. And in fact, you are correct. You, At that instant, you probably are 90% certain, uh, correctly 90% certain, that the market will go that one extra tick before it goes six or seven or eight ticks in the opposite direction. Okay, this is what, just what I was saying. You would only hold on to that position if you were actually 90% certain. Otherwise, you'd have a lo losing trader's equation and it, w and, and, and it would be irrational for you to hold on to a trade that has a losing trader's equation because you would lose money. The cardinal rule of trading, you always want a reward at least as large as your risk. So if you're risking 50 cents in IBM, you have to go for a reward at least as great as uh, your risk. In other words, at least 50 cents. Because otherwise, if the risk is greater than the reward, you have to be right 70% of the time just to break even. And you can't be trading to break even. You have to be trading to make money. You know, most of the best traders cannot be right 70% of the time, day after day, year after year. So you should not be going for a risk greater than the reward because that requires you to be right 70% of the time. And that's something that most great traders cannot do. 60-40 rule. Nothing works all of the time. Everything works some of the time. Most things work 60, 40 to 60 percent of the time. So this is the assumption that you should make with every setup. The probability is somewhere between 40 and 60 percent. Whenever someone says he has a higher probability, he's being dishonest. He's uh, selling you something. Every now and then you'll see someone on uh, fast money say that, oh, the market's going up. Gold is going way, way, way up, right? Whenever somebody says that, they're either dishonest or stupid because they're assuming the probability is far greater than 60%, and they cannot be that certain because if the probability was 90%, the market would immediately get up to that uh, price target, right? It, you know, the only reason the market is not up to where they say it's going to go is that the probability is not nearly as high as they're making it sound. You know, perfect trades cannot exist because everyone would jump on them and there would be no one left to take the other side of the trade. <clears throat> okay, remember, institutions are the market. 95% of every market is institutional, right? And at every given instant, uh, every given instance, there's a bull buying and a bear firm selling. And both presumably are profitable. So... You know, how can they both win? Uh, because there's a valid bull and bear case at every moment of the day, okay? Remember, both the bulls and the bears have a 40% chance of making a profitable uh, trade because all setups are between 40% profitable. And they also have a 40 to 60% chance of losing even with a great setup. You know, everything is between 40 and 60%. <coughs> Okay, can both the bulls and bears be right? In other words, at any given instant, both the bulls and the bears are taking positions, and they would not take the positions if they, have done, if they had not done testing, proving that they have positive traders' equations. So how can it possibly be that the bulls are buying at this minute, and the bears are selling at this minute, and they both have positive traders' equations? It's because of the 40 to uh, 60 uh, rule, 40 to 60 rule. And um, remember, for a swing trade, you only have to be right 40 to 50% of the time, right? And therefore, the other side uh, is probably 40 to 50% uh, chance of success as well. So if a bull has a 50% chance of success, he has a 50% chance of failure, that means the person taking the other side of his trade has a 50% chance of success, right? So both sides will have between a 40 to 60% chance of success on every instant during the day and if they manage their trades correctly both can be profitable if they take the 40 percent side they need to reward twice their risk if they take a 50 to uh, 50 percent side you know they need probably twice the risk as well but if they take a 60 percent trade they only need a reward equal to their risk also 
institutions will scale in as the market goes against them, and that increases their probability. Uh, what's a good trader's equation? Uh, since a swing trade requires a reward at least twice the risk, both the bull bulls and bears can lose more than 50% of the time and still make money. Okay, take a look at this market. We have a bear channel, a bull breakout, and we have a higher low major trend reversal. So it's a good setup for the bulls. Is it 60% certain that they'll make a reward twice the size of their risk? I don't know. Most major trend reversals are more like 50%. Some are 40%. I would assume this is more 50-50. Anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a decent major trend reversal setup for the bulls. A higher low major trend reversal. So that's a good swing trade for the bulls. Now look what happened. Here's the bear argument. Okay, We have a bear trend. Um, and we have a rally, but most... Reversal attempts fail. Here's a reversal attempt. Most reversal attempts fail. And uh, what they're doing is saying, ah, oh, yeah, it's a higher low major trend reversal, but it's hitting the bear trend line and it's forming a bear reversal bar. Uh, that's a good short and a bear trend. Um, we're also in a trading range, you know, maybe in the top half of the range, I don't know, but we're at a trend, a bear trend line in a bear trend, um, so it's a reasonable short. So the bulls bought here for a swing long, 50-50 bet. The bears are shorting here for a test of the trend line and a bear trend uh, for a 50-50 bet. And both have valid arguments. If you look to the left, you can see that we've been in a trading range for the past 30 or 40 bars. And whenever the market's in a trading range, there are bull cases and bear cases. Both are valid. A usually positive trader's equation, um, you need a very high probability of making a very big reward while having a very small risk. In other words, a perfect trade, right? You have a high probability of making a whole bunch of money while risking very little. That's a perfect trade. Again, it cannot exist because there has to be an institution to take the other side of the trade. And no firm would take the opposite, which would be a low probability of making only a small reward while having a big risk, right? No firm is going to do that, and therefore a perfect trade cannot exist. So beginners looking for perfect trades will never find them. They'll find plenty of people who will sell them um, books and programs uh, that uh, guarantee perfect results, but they're all frauds. Any trade that comes close to perfection would be quickly jumped on by many institutions. So um, let's say we have a perfect buy setup, right? And everyone looks at it and say, wow, that's perfect. What would happen is everyone would buy and you'd get a huge uh, bull trend bar. Uh, the stop of any long up there would be below the bottom of the bar. So the risk would be huge, right? And um, there probably would not be much left to the move because everyone knows the market was going up and we just went up and uh, the probability is less. So as soon as everyone decided it's perfect, you'd get the huge bull trend bar that greatly increases the risk, significantly reduces the reward and also reduces the probability. So uh, the perf perfect trade no longer exists. You know, trading is always going to be difficult. Nobody's going to give you money. Um, the trader's equation is never going to be very positive. Your edge, your mathematical advantage, is always going to be small. Uh, there are problems that makes it difficult to uh, trade every type of a market. Uh, a trading range, uh, a strong breakout, uh, or a channel. Remember, the market's in a constant cycle. Uh, it goes from a, a breakout phase to a channel phase. Both are in a trend. And then it, uh, the channel eventually evolves into a trading range, neutral. And then from there, it breaks out again in either direction. So it's either trending or in a trading range. And when it's in a trading range, it turns into a trend. And when it's in a trend, it turns into a trading range. <clears throat> so why are breakouts difficult? Uh, remember, I said all types of trading are difficult. You've got breakouts and then 
uh, channels and then trading ranges. Well, in breakouts, um, let's say you got a huge bear breakout, the stop goes above the top of the bar, so the risk is very big. You have to think very quickly because the bar market is moving very fast. You have to adjust the size of your position because your risk is now very large. You have to calculate how big your risk is and then reduce the position appropriately. So you have to be constantly adjusting the size of uh, your position. You're also adjusting the size of your risk and your reward. And the fast, adjudgment, the fast adjustments are scary and uh, difficult. You have to do them correctly. Although the probability of profit is very high, there's a sense of urgency, and that makes traders feel uncomfortable, and it often paralyzes them and prevents them from taking trades. Again, high risk. If you have a huge breakout, the stop goes below the bottom of the breakout in a bull breakout. In a bear breakout, it goes above the top of the breakout bar or bars, and it's far away. Traders always want to pull back so that the risk will be smaller. So let's say it's a bull trend and it's going up and up and up and up. Traders say, well, I don't want to risk all the way to the bottom of that bar, so I'll wait for a pullback, and then I'll risk to the bottom of the pullback when I buy. The problem is everyone knows that, and the trend will just keep going up and up and up and up, and it'll go very, very far before the pullback uh, ever comes. And the result is the beginners will miss uh, all of the breakout phase of the trend, which is the fastest, biggest part of the trend. Reversals are also very difficult. Okay, A reversal is a breakout or it leads to a breakout. So let's say you have a bull trend and the market's reversing. Uh, it either reverses with a breakout or it leads to a breakout. And uh, the reversals usually look unconvincing. The probability just doesn't look good. Um, it doesn't look good until the market has gone very far. In other words, until it has a big breakout. And by then, you've already missed a big chunk of the move, and then you have the problems of dealing with a breakout. Channels are difficult. So after you get that strong bull breakout, the market then answers a channel phase. You know, you start to have pullbacks. And when it's starting to have pullbacks, you look at it and you say, well, I don't know, it looks like it's trying to reverse. I don't want to be buying here. So traders end up getting trapped out. When you do have that little pullback, it'll start to look like, huh, maybe this is not a pullback, maybe this is a reversal. So the beginners end up not buying the pullback because they feel that the pullback, even though the risk is much less, uh, the probability is way too low. You know, they see the pullback as a possible reversal rather than a pause in the trend. Remember, channels evolve into trading ranges, and if the market is now in a trading range, uh, the probability uh, is very low to buy at the top of it and very low to sell at the bottom of it. And also the risk is greater. So if you're buying at the top of a trading range, you're betting that the market has converted into a trend and your stop is way at the bottom of the trading range. So you have a very big risk. Trading ranges always look like they're breaking out. You always have strong bull spikes to the top and it looks like it's going to break out. Strong bear spikes to the bottom and it looks like it breaks out. Um, but the breakouts, 80% of them fail. Okay, The reversals at the top of the range don't quite look good. Uh, the reversals at the bottom of the range don't quite look good. So you have a strong bear spike, and it tries to reverse up. Traders are thinking, oh, such a strong bear spike, there should be a second leg down. So they don't want to buy near the bottom of the range. They think the probability is too low. <coughs> okay. It's better to scalp in a trading range, and you need high probabilities when scalping, so you have to wait for higher probabilities when the market's in a trading range. Sometimes you can get a very strong reversal bar at the bottom of the range or top of the range. That's higher probability. Or you can wait for a second entry, like a little double bottom at the bottom of the range or a little double top at the top of the range. Okay, what is the directional probability of an equidistant move? Well, it's the answer to this question. At any given moment, what are the odds that the market will move up one tick before it moves down one tick? What are the odds that it will move up three ticks before moving down uh, three ticks? Okay, Equidistant move. In other words, one tick up or one tick down. 15 ticks up, 15 ticks down. Okay, What's the probability that it will move in one direction versus the other uh, that same number of ticks? Most of the time, it's 
Most of the time, there's a 50-50 chance uh, the market will move up two or three ticks before it moves down two or three ticks. And it'll move up two or three points before it moves down two or three points. Sometimes the probability is 60% or better, and when it is, you have an edge. But edges are fleeting, so you have to act quickly. For example, in a strong bull trend, the probability of the market rising six points or more in the E-mini before hitting a two-point stop uh, it can quickly be 70% or higher, right? But it won't last long. So if you see that setup, you got to take the trade. Okay? When you're in, a, here's an example of a strong bear trend, right? These four charts are the same chart, and they show what happens at different times of entry. Let's say you took the short right here, okay? The signal bar is five ticks, uh, you have a five tick a tall bear spike, right? The, the height of the body to the close of the body, okay? What's the chance that the market will go up five ticks before it goes down five ticks? Uh, not much. It's probably going to go down uh, five ticks, all right? So five tick measured move down here. Um, <clears throat> if you entered on the close of this bar right here, okay, now the bear spike is 10 ticks tall, right? It's a bear trend, probably a bear trend. So the math is probably better than 50-50 that it's going to fall 10 ticks before it hits a, a protective stop above the top of the spike, right? So if you short here, your stop probably would be above the top of the spike, about 10 ticks up. Um, so you're betting that it's probably going to fall 10 ticks before it goes up 10 ticks. Okay, let's say you sold the close of this bar. The spike is now 16 ticks tall, 4 ticks um, big. Uh, the probability is higher at this point that there will be good follow-through selling. Your stop is above the top of the bar, right? Um, so at this instant, you're risking 16 ticks on a trade that probably will work, uh, certainly at least 50-50. Um, you, uh, your target at this point would be at least a 16-tick measured move. Let's say you entered a bar later at, over here, right? At this point, you'd have to risk 19 ticks. Um, an equidistant move is down here, and your probability is uh, higher than 50% since you're in a bear trend. It might be 60%. So as the, um, as the spike grows from a one-bar spike to a, a three-bar spike to a four-bar spike, um, and it's in a trend, uh, the target also grows because you base your target upon your risk. You, you want to target at least as great as your risk. So here, if your risk is 16 ticks, let's say you enter at this instant, you have to go for a target that's at least 16 ticks. Uh, here, you have a 19 tick target, 19 tick risk, but that's great for the traders who entered way back up here when the risk was just 5 ticks. So those traders, they're actually only risking 5 ticks. They shorted here, their stop is here. So at this instant, they're risking 5 ticks, yet when the market is here, they have probably a 50 to 60 percent chance of making 19 more ticks beyond where the market is at this instant. So you want to enter as early as you can and adjust your target as the size of the spike grows. And you can end up with a reward that's many times greater than your risk. So the traders who entered early, if they entered here or if they entered here, now have a target way down here, several times greater than their risk. And they have better than a 50-50 chance of achieving their target. A trading range, what's the directional probability of um, a reversal going four points or more before hitting a two-point stop. So let's say you're in a trading range that's five or six points tall and you have to risk and you're shorting at the top and you have to risk two points. What's the probability of the market going four points in your direction? And sometimes can be actually 70 percent or more. So shorting at the top of a trading range can have a very strong Trader's equation, you might be just risking two points to above the top of your bear signal bar, and yet your target might be the bottom of the range, which could be four points or more away, and you could end up uh, sometimes having a very high probability of getting a reward that is twice the size of your risk. Here's a trading range, okay? The top half is in blue, the bottom half is in green. You want to buy low, you want to buy in the green half, you want to sell high. You want to be selling in the top half, all right? And in the top half, the probability of um, profit is higher for the bears 
so it's better to short. In the bottom half, the probability of making a profitable trade is better for the bulls, and it's better to uh, only be buying. In the middle of the trading range, the probability for both the bears and the bulls is 50%, and that makes it tough to make uh, a profitable trade, because with a 50% probability, you need a reward twice the size of your risk, and um, it's very hard to, um, to do that because you need a certain risk size, and there may not be enough room um, left to the edge of the trading range for you to make a reward twice the size of your risk. If you short near the top, you certainly can get a reward twice your risk. If you buy near the bottom, you certainly can get a reward twice your risk. Okay, let's deal. Uh, let's talk about high probability uh, f trades near the top or bottom of the trading range. If it's high probability in the E mini and, and you're risking two points, all you have to do is uh, go for a target of two points. So if you're buying near the bottom and you're using a two point stop, and you're probably a 60% certain uh, uh, of making a profit because you're buying at the bottom of a range, you only have to go for a reward that's equal to your risk or two points. In the middle of the range, 50-50, uh, it's usually better not to take any trades. At the bottom of the range, you probably do have a 60% chance of the market going up two points before going down two points. At the top of the range, you probably have a 60% chance of the market going down two points before going up two points. Here, if you shorted below this bear bar, your risk is um, one tick above the bar to one tick below the bar where you entered. And you're shorting a bear bar, a second entry short at the top of the range, probably a 60% chance of making as many ticks as you had to risk. And uh, that would be a positive trader's equation. And this is the end of the module on probability and the trader's equation.